the different religions that think that Jesus was just a good man. Just a good man that came along. Are y'all with me? And they, they, they think he was just a good man, just another man. As a matter of fact, they don't believe in the resurrection of the man. They just believe he was another man that came alone. But I come to tell you today, I believe all of it. I believe all of him. I believe that Jesus, come on here somebody, was the only begotten son of God. I believe that he lived. Come on. I believe that he suffered. I believe that he shed his blood. Yeah, I wish I had some help in here. I believe that that blood is so strong that it reaches to the highest mountain and flows through the lowest valley. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that he gave his life. I believe that he was buried, went in a tomb. Y'all ain't helping me. And three days later, got up again with all power in his hand. I believe it. I just need to know, are there some other folk in here that believe it, that believe? Do I have any believers in here? Somebody might say, why do you believe it like that? I believe it like that because not only did I hear it, not only did I read it, but I experienced it. Nothing like somebody that's experienced this thing. I heard he was a healer, but then he healed me. I heard he was a way maker, but then he made a way for me. I heard he would bring you out, but then he brought me. Y'all ain't helping me. I heard he would supply all of our needs, and then he supplied my needs. I'm a believer. Lift up the name of Jesus. He's 
of us just want to reverence God and show him our love? How many of us just want to be pleasing in God's eyes? Hallelujah.
With the, rain. with the rain, let the songs, let the songs of my heart rise to bless His name. Rise to bless your name. Flow to you. Flow to you. Hallelujah! We bless Your name. You. Let all my worship, let my worship, glory to Your name. Flow to you. Now come on and give God a hand praise right there. There's nobody greater. We magnify his name in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel God moving. I feel God moving. Feel God moving. Way down, way down, way down, way down in my soul. If I couldn't say a word, hallelujah. If I couldn't say a If I couldn't say a word, I'd why, I'd why, I'd why, my head. Come on and give him some praise in this place. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, we thank God. We thank God. Oh, God is moving by his spirit. We're in. I'm glad. Amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand praise. Amen. We thank God for another day and another opportunity to come forth and to bring forth his word on today. And without any further preliminaries, I bring forth my husband, associate pastor, Robert Andrews, and I believe and I know that the Lord has a word for you on this morning. So get your word out because he's a word man. He says everything. He backs it up by the word because he's been taught from the foundation into, as he calls my mother, the foundation. She watered the ground. She started the ground, broke it up, and then Bishop came along and fertilized it. And so now we thank God for the man that he is on today. Amen. We thank God for him on today. Amen. And I know that you're going to be blessed by God. So without any further ado, I present to you none other than Associate Pastor Robert Andrews. God bless you. Right where you're at, right where you're at, lift up a hand, praise. Just go on and lift up a hand, praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Choir may be seated. I was going to sing, but Bishop took my song, so I won't be singing this week. Maybe next time. You all can go on and take your seat. I just want to... I just want to thank God for all he is to me. I want to give him praise and honor for his son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. 
my refuge and my strength. Lord, I love you and I thank you, Father. And I'm not afraid to stand before these people and the people of God proclaiming that you are God and you are God alone. And Lord, I love you. I love you, Father. You've blessed me. You've established me. You continue to order my steps. You continue to hear me when I pray. You continue to meet me in my place of asking. Lord, I love you, and I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. I want to acknowledge Bishop Hilton and Pastor V, my spiritual parents. I thank you so much for what you've done. I thank you for, for, for taking this vessel to the next level. As the Lord leads you, he leads me. As he pour down and rains on you, he rains on me. So Bishop and Pastor V, I thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your steadfastness. Thank you for your exampling of righteousness. I thank God for who you are. I want to acknowledge my wife. My wife, March will be, March be 31 years, March 23rd, 31 years. She's been with me. She's been by my side. The Lord has blessed her. He's blessed us. He's blessed our union. I thank God for the family that he's given us. I thank God for my children. And I thank God for my children's children. God is amazing. God is amazing. Thank you, Lord. And I want to acknowledge all the teachers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles in the house, the fivefold ministry, those in their perspective places. I thank God for you. I thank God for the girding. I thank God for the unity that we benefit from as a body of believers. So to God be the glory for each and every one of you who are in position to serve. To God be the glory. I want to also thank you, Word Family. And not just Word Family, but I'm starting with you because you're here and you're my, you're my church family. You've stood with me over these years. You've stood with my family over these years. I want to thank you from, our, from the bottom of my heart how much you blessed us, how much you stood with us, how much you encouraged us, how you stood in the gap, how you prayed on our behalf, how you sent us cards and you, you expressed your condolences, how you hugged us, how you fed us. I thank and I praise God for this word family. To God be the glory. Give yourselves a hand, praise. I also want to thank and acknowledge those who are not a part of the word of deliverance, but still a, body of, but still a part of the body of believers. There are many people, Bishop, who don't go to this church who stood, stood with us, encouraged us and blessed us, prayed for us, stood in the gap, fed us, and to God be the glory for them as well. So we are grateful. We are grateful. So I just want you to know that we are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful for what the Lord has positioned you all to do in our lives and for us. To God be the glory. Now I ask that everyone will stand, please. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Now this word I want to proclaim to you this morning, I just want to give you just a little, 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 little bit of background. I'm not going to be before you alone. When I got the assignment to minister on this morning, I put pen to pad and I wrote it down. I think it's the book of Habakkuk that says, write the vision and make it plain. And the Lord has always led me to put pen to pad. When you guys see me up here, you'll never see me without a notebook. I don't want to miss anything, and I don't want to leave anything out. But I submit to the Holy Ghost, and however the Holy Ghost leads and guides me, that's the way I'm going to go. But when I got the assignment to minister, I wrote it down. That was a Friday, I believe. And I laid my hand on it, and I prayed. I said, Lord, if this is the word you'll have me to minister, then Lord, so be it. I said, Lord, but if it's not the word, then you change it. You change it, Lord. And Pastor V, I left that pad on my desk. And I went to bed. And the next morning before I woke up, he changed. He changed the message. He changed the message. And that's that message I'm going to proclaim to you now. Please join me in a word of prayer. Dear precious Father, we thank you and we glorify you. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to come before your people once again. Father, you are God and God alone. You need no help from me, O oh God. But Father, I humbly ask and pray, use me to your glory. Father, I decrease and I ask that you increase. I say yes, Lord. 
I say, yes, Lord. I say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. I ask, oh God, if you'll open up the ears of all who are listening, oh God, that they may hear what thus saith the Lord. Prepare them, Father, to receive. Prepare their hearts, Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we will be forever mindful to give you praise and honor and glory because you're worthy. In Jesus' precious name, we say amen. Amen, amen. And it is so. Now, the word of God says in Deuteronomy 1 and 6, Deuteronomy 1, 6 through 8, this is the King James Version, and the word says, the Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn ye and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto. In the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the sea, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river the Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. You go and possess the land, which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them, and to their seed after them. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may take your seats. He said, he said, you have dwelt long enough in this mount. He said, turn you and take your journey. He said, behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. I've titled this sermon, It's Time to Break Camp. It's time to break camp. Proclaiming in the atmosphere, it's time to break camp. Come on now, proclaiming in the atmosphere, it is time to break camp. It is time to break camp. A sudden move, a sudden abrupt move from stagnation a sudden move from, from inactivity, a sudden move forward, a sudden move to what happens next, a sudden move to where the Lord has called us to go. He's saying, I placed a land before you. I've given a land to you. He's saying, all you have to do is move. He's saying, all you have to do is move. He said, if you believe me and trust me, all you have to do is move. But he says, you got to have things in order. You got to have things in order. Before you move, you got to have things in order. Moses, Deuteronomy is a historical book. And Moses shows and illustrates how a move of God was mighty. Moses is the, the greatest leader that, 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 that man has known. He is a deliverer. He's the one who brought forth the commandments. He was the lawgiver as ordained by God. The Lord positioned Moses to leave the place of Midian where he was for 40 years. Moses was exiled from Egypt because Moses did not want to partake of the lifestyle of the Egyptians. Even though it was a lifestyle that he was, he was privy to. The Bible tells us that he was raised as an Egyptian. He was the surrogate son of Pharaoh. But Moses had this tug way down in the spirit. Moses knew that this was not where I was supposed to be. I am not supposed to be positioned in this world. This world of idolatry, it is not my positioning. It is not what God has called me to do. It is not where God has called me to be. So Moses killed an Egyptian, and Moses had to go into exile. Moses had to break camp. Moses had to go into exile where he stayed in the land of Midian for over 40 years. While in that land of Midian, Moses got married. He had a couple sons. He had a wife named Zipporah 
father-in-law named Jethro. And it was Jethro. After Moses was, 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 was called to deliver the children from Israel, and he delivered them through the, dry, through the Red Sea on dry land, they were positioned in the wilderness, an 11-day journey. And it's not so much the, the duration of the journey, it's the condition of your heart. How is your heart during the journey? How is your heart as you're positioned for what happens next? Are you ready? Are you ready? You think about that. The children of Israel were positioned on the east side of the Jordan. That's what the Bible says. The promised land, the land of milk and honey, Canaan, was just an eye shot. But things had to be put in order. Jethro, the father-in-law, came to visit Moses. Moses was happy to see him. The father-in-law fellowshiped with him. They broke bread. They talked. The father-in-law saw Moses minister before the people all day long. All day long. After Moses ministered, Jethro pulled him aside and he said, what is this that you are doing? He said, this is too much for you. He said, this is too much for you. He said, there are people in your midst that can help you carry this burden. There are people in our midst that can help carry this burden. It's the burden that has to be shared for what happens next. For inhabiting the promised land. For going to that place that the Lord has set aside for you. Moses said, this is good. He said, I receive what you are saying. This illustrates, it shows how a relationship among family members can be one of, of, of wisdom. Family members can function in the will of God together. Now, Jethro was a Midianite. The Bible says he was a priest in Midian. But Jethro benefited from Moses for 40 years. 40 years Jethro watched Moses minister before the Lord. 40 years Jethro watched Moses submit himself to the Almighty God. 40 years Jethro watched Moses pray and appeal unto the Most High God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jethro gleaned from what he saw Moses do. There are people that are gleaning from what they see you do. They are gleaning from what they see you do. Moses, the entire time in Midian, was being prepared. He was being prepared for what happens next. What happens next? 40 years, what happens next? I am 59. I'll be 60 December 18th. I was called to pastor about four years ago. I thought I wasn't going to be called. At 55, I was called to pastor. God is not a respecter of time. Time doesn't matter to him. Come on now. Time doesn't matter to him. Time doesn't matter to him. After 40 years, after 40 years of preparation, Moses was positioned to minister. Jethro had been watching the entire time. 55 years I've been waiting to minister. 55 years. It wasn't something that, that I, 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 I sought to do. It wasn't something that, that, that I, I, I felt that, that, that I should be doing. I was doing quite well teaching in the classroom. I was doing quite well, I thought, being a deacon. I was doing, I was doing well. But the Lord said, there's more work to be done. So he called me after 55 years as he called Moses after 40 years. He positioned Moses to deliver the people. He's positioned me to speak what thus saith the Lord. He's positioned me to tell you what he's saying. And he's saying, before you go over there, you got to be prepared over here. He's saying, I've set a place for you. He says, I'm taking you to a place that's abundant, that's flowing with milk and honey. 
He said, all that you can desire, all that you want, I have set aside for you. He says, but you got to keep me first. You got to acknowledge me. See, the book of Deuteronomy is a book of history. It's a history that reflects back to Exodus. Yeah, it was Exodus 18 where, where Jethro and, and, and Moses had this conversation. They were already delivered by the time they were in Deuteronomy. But Deuteronomy reflects back, and the Lord wants you to know, he wants you to know you must rededicate yourself to him. You must rededicate yourself to him. You must reposition your priorities. You must acknowledge him first and foremost. See, you can't go from over here to over there without him. You can't go, let me try that again. You can't go from over here to over there without him. It's he that's set up over there so that you can benefit from it. How are you going to take what he's provided for you and you're not going to even acknowledge him? Come on now. Come on now. So Moses took the advice. Moses took the advice. And this is what it says in Deuteronomy 1 and 15 through 17. So I took the chief, chief of the tribes, wise men, and known, well, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is within. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Bishop, he put, he put associate pastors. He put deacons. He put elders. He put ministers. He put evangelists. He put teachers all in place. All in place for the transition to over there. See, over there is, over there is much larger than over here. Where we're going is much larger than where we are now. And there are many more people that are going to come. And we need to be prepared and we need to be organized. The Bible tells us, it says, let everything be done decently and in order. Let everything be done decently and in order. So in order for us to embrace the over there, the what happens next, the land of milk and honey, all that provision, all that abundance, all that increase, and all that it comes with, we have to be prepared. And we have to have our house in order. That means we have to recommit, reestablish where our feet are standing. Are you standing on solid ground? Are you standing upon the rock of your salvation? Is Jesus Christ still your all in all? Is he still your number one? Is he still everything that you desire? Will you put him first? Will you keep him first? Will you obey him? Will you trust him? These are the things that Moses was conveying to Israel. And the Bible goes on to talk about how Moses, in preparation for what happens next, the over there, he sent out spies. He said, go and survey the land. Go and check it out. Tell me what it looks like. Let me know what you see. Let me know what's over there. And the Bible says they went over, and they checked out the land, and they brought back a report. The Bible says that there were those who, who felt overwhelmed at what they saw, completely overwhelmed. And they came back and they told their brethren, no, 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 no. The people over there are greater than we are. The walls, are, the walls reach to heaven. They're stronger than we are. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. Here, Bishop, I submit, is probably the first incidence of misinformation. The first infinite incidence of misinformation. Taking and manipulating truth. Using it to influence others to your benefit. 
making them, allowing them, encouraging them to stand on, your, on where you're standing, seeing things from your perspective. But this isn't what the Lord said. He said, go and possess the land. He said, go and possess the land. He said, take it over. He said, go and possess the land. This is what they said in Deuteronomy 1 and 28. They said, whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying, the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins here. They saw the sons of the Anakins as, as giants. And the Bible says that the people began to rebel. They began to resist based on what they heard. Based on what they heard, they took a step back from God. Be careful of those that you let into your ear gates. Be careful of those you let into your ear gates. See, Moses benefited. Moses had a wise, a wise father-in-law who to, to advise him. But there are those that, 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 that take advice from, from others who, who, do not, who do not benefit you. And they're taking you on an alternate path, a path of rebellion. And when you rebel, you are not trusting God. When you rebel, you are offending God. When you rebel, you are not doing what God called or told you to do. When you are rebelling, you have, been, you have become an adversary to what God wants you to do. He is the Lord our God who has positioned us for victory. He is the Lord our God who hears us when we pray. He is the Lord our God who has delivered us from sin, delivered us from captivity, delivered us from bondage. He is an almighty God. He is an all-sufficient God. He is Elohim, the everlasting God. He is El Shaddai, the almighty God. He is Jehovah, the Lord, our God. He is Jehovah Elion, the most high God. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God of our healer. He is Jehovah Nisi, the God, our banner. He is Jehovah Kedinishkadu, the Lord, our sanctifier. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. He is. He is. He is Adonai. He is master. And he is Lord. He has positioned us to inherit the land. He has positioned us for what happens next. He has positioned us to walk in the fruit of the land. He has positioned us to, to, to benefit from all that he has established. And he says, not just for you, but for your children also. For your children also. Those things that you example in righteousness, those prayers that you pray, that submission that you submit unto God, that walk of faith that you do every single day, that acknowledgement of who God is, your children sees that and they watch that and they glean from you. They glean from you. They glean from you. It's not just for us. It's for you and the second and the third and the fourth generation. You don't have to live under a curse. You can live under the blessings. You can walk in the increase. You can walk in the overflow. You can have all that he's ordained for you to have. All you have to do is submit. Stop trying to do things in your own will. Stop praying and then going back and doing the opposite. Stop praying and then go and run in your mouth. Stop talking about what you shouldn't be talking about. Come on now. Be mindful of who you allow in your ear gates. The word of God says, he says there is safety in a multitude of counselors. There is safety in a multitude of counselors. You should surround yourself with like-minded individuals. And those who you take advice from should be those who are walking upright, those who are living right, those who are living holy, those who have a prayer life, those who have a relationship. Not just lip service, but those who are living that way. From this day forward, from this day forward, why? Because we love him. 
Because we love him. Why? Because he loves us. He requires that we love him completely. He requires that we love him unconditionally. He requires that we walk and live in the covenant that he's established within us. Deuteronomy is a historical book. It's the fifth of the five books that Moses wrote, referred to as the Pentateuch. There's questions as to whether Moses finished it because Moses did not walk in the promised land. Moses committed a sin against God, so he was not able to, to walk into the promised land. So there's questions as to whether Moses finished the Deuteronomy completely or whether it was Joshua. The people rebelled. The people rebelled. They began to resist what God has called them to do. They began to resist and disbelieve what God has told them. He says, I'm the same God who delivered you. I'm the same God who brought you over on dry land through the Red Sea. I'm the same God in the midst of you destroyed the Egyptians and Pharaoh who were following you. I'm the same God who fed you. I'm the same God who gave you provision. I'm the same God who paid your rent. I'm the same God who gave you a car. I'm the same God who healed you. I'm the same God who took care of your child. He said, I'm the same God. I'm the same God that reconciled you back with family members. I'm the same God that's afforded you all the things that you benefit from now. He says, I am the same God. But you've changed. You've got brand new. You felt like you can do it on your own. So you decided you didn't need me no more. So you decided to just push me away. Because you got what you got, you feel like you, you, you've arrived. You feel like you done came up. And now people in your ear tell you, yeah, you are all that. Yeah, you looking good. Yeah, wow, is this all yours? Oh my, ooh, ooh girl, you, ooh boy, you doing it. You're doing it big. He's the same God. But this is the one that you're rejecting now. This is the one you're rejecting now because you got brand new. This is the one you feel like you don't need no more. This is the one that you conveniently forgot about because everything is going so well. Everything is going so well, or so you think. Not knowing that you're being set up. You're being set up. It's like going fishing. You got hook, you're on the hook and you're being reeled in. You're being reeled in, and you don't realize it. This is, what the God, this is what the Lord says. This is what he says in response to the rebellion. In Deuteronomy 1, 34 through 38, this is what the Lord says. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, all the murmuring and complaining, all the talking, all the naysaying, all the, all the self-gloating and self-righteousness, taking credit for things that you didn't accomplish, but he accomplished, allowing you to accomplish this is what he's saying. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Verse 38 says this. I'm going to jump down to verse 38. It says this. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. He's saying, I will raise up. I'll raise up a new generation of leaders. You won't do it. You won't obey me. You won't acknowledge me. You won't trust me. You want to defy me. You want to rebel against me. After all I've done for you, after where I've brought you from, he says, I'll get me some new leaders. I'll get me a new, I'll get me a new leader. I'll bring up Joshua's. I will bring up Joshua's. Why? Why? Because of rebellion. That's why. Because of rebellion. The Lord said, remind the people of what I've done. He said, encourage them to dedicate, rededicate their lives to me. Saints of God, I say it's time. It's time to break camp. It's time to break camp. It's time to break camp. It's time to go from over here to over there. It's time to walk, walk in the land of plenty. 
It's time to walk and receive what all the Lord has established for us. All that he's set aside for us, it's time to move in that direction. It's time to receive it. It is time to receive it. But you have to rededicate yourself. You have to reestablish your relationship with the Lord. Now, for those of you who have kept your foot on the gas pedal, then keep your foot on the gas pedal. But for those of you who've let off, who hit that cruise control, those of you who put it in neutral and decide I'm going to coast, you need to take a better look at what you're doing. You need to put that joker back in gear. You need to put your foot back on the gas, and you need to steer. In fact, you need to say, Lord, will you steer for me? Come on now. You need to let the Lord lead and guide you. If you're going to trust him, then trust him. If you're going to... If you're gonna, it, if you're going to pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith is that prayer of believing that what you're asking for, God is going to do. If you're going to pray that prayer of faith, then I, I, I submit to you, believe God. One of the things that we've done so much is that we pray the, fair, the prayer of faith and we take it back. We decide to try and do things in our own strength. And that's where we get in trouble. That's where we get in trouble. I'm getting ready to close. But because we're disciples of Jesus Christ, because we love and serve the Most High God, because of our positioning in him, because of what he's called us to do and because of what he's promised us, he tells us to our second, third, and fourth generation, he'll bless our seed. He'll bless our seed. But this is what the Lord says. He says it in Matthew 12 and 14. He says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savior, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. My encouragement, saints of God, those of you who, can we, let's, let's stand, please. We can all stand, please. Those of you that are in need of prayer, I ask that you come to my right for prayer. Those that are in need of prayer, I ask that you come to my right. Those of you who realize that perhaps you've taken your foot up off the gas, perhaps you've letting some people or individuals or circumstances come between you and God, now is a time to recommit yourself. Now is a time to reestablish your walk of faith. There's no time like the present. There is no time like the present. See, tomorrow's not promised to us. Tomorrow's not promised. Saints of God, now is the time. Those things that, 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 that you have focused on throughout this season that you know are contrary to who God has called you to be, it's time to let them go. It's time to clean out your house. It's time to get your house in order. It's time to walk in the fruition that the Lord has called you to walk in. But you can't do that unless your house is in order. You can't do that unless you are submitted and recommitted to almighty and perfect God. And that's through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Acknowledging Jesus Christ, confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is the only way to salvation. My encouragement is unto you now. Think about this. I've heard just recently we got, we're, we're having a 21-day fast. It is, an, it is a great opportunity to recommit yourself, rededicate yourself to the Lord for what happens next, for what happens next. The Bible says old things have passed away and all things are made new. It is time for us to go from over here to over there, from over here to over there. Amen. 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 Let's lift up a hand, praise. Amen. He moves all pain. Those that are at your seat, just pray and intercede. Point your hand this way for those that are on the altar. God is moving. He's making a way out of no way.
And we're believing God that they won't go back home the way that they walked in the building on today. We thank God because break time is over. And we don't want to find ourselves in the places that we were in last year. But we're moving toward purpose and destiny. He's moving on our behalf. And we thank him. God is. God is. God is. God is. Oh, God is. God is. Oh, God is my all. God is my all. He's my all. And all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. He'll never leave you. Never to leave He'll never, never, never come short of his You got to fast and pray. Fast and pray. Stay, Stay in, in the narrow way. Keep my life. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with When he comes him. back. When he comes back. I've come too far. Come too far. And I'll never that I was in yesterday but I'm moving forward and you know when my my nephew eulogized my mother and he prophesied to different ones in her family and he told me he said auntie you God got more you just think you just come here to sing but it's now time for you to do what God has called you to do and I just thank God you know I thank God for my mother's life on today and I thank God because he positioned me to be able to take care of my mother. Yes. And I took her care of her like I would want myself to be someone to take care of me. Yes. And I did it with all that I have. And, you know, sometimes I got tired, but God strengthened me yes. to do that. Yes. And I know that it's not over because the legacy, you know, her word and her life and everything that she did and she poured into me. Now it's my turn. And I just thank God because I'm just, I ask you to pray for me because I know God is going to take me to the next next. Yes. And whatever he, he fits for me to do, I just say, yes, Lord. Yes. I say, yes, Lord. Yes. So whatever it is God has commissioned you to do, just give him a yes on today. Yes. Give him a yes. yes. Forget about the naysayers and those that speak negativity because God is able to do everything, anything but fail. Hallelujah. And I thank God because the greater is here. Hallelujah. Our greater. And we haven't seen the best. The best is yet to come. And we thank God for this mighty man of God, our visionary, 
Bishop Bobby Hilton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for him. And if you would just stand on the principles of what he's preaching, take your notes and meditate it on the next day and the next day. Hallelujah. God will give you an answer. Amen. And he will meet the needs. And we thank God for old Pastor Valda by his side. Amen. That's praying and interceding and that is pouring into the people's lives. Oh, we're so grateful on today. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. Amen. And just remember, 2020 is around the corner. Amen. And we're going to do what God has commissioned us to do. So get your children ready. We're going to get ready and come back in and we're going to do greater. Amen. For God in this time in the kingdom of God. God bless you all. Say to God, before I pray, I just want you to know, as the Lord allows, that this is a journey that we can all take together. This is a journey that we can all take together. If we submit, stay submitted unto the Lord our God, believing and trusting him and him alone, through faith in his son Jesus Christ. In the end, we win. In the end, we win. In fact, we win now. We win now. You can win now and in the end. Let us bow our heads. Dear precious Father, we thank you and we glorify you. We thank you, Father, for how you've blessed and met us in this place of, of asking and seeking. We thank you, Father, for just being a vessel that you positioned, Father, for a time such as this. Father, I ask that you look upon every individual, Father, who is here and every individual, Father, who's tuned in. I ask you, O oh God, to stir up, O oh God. Draw nigh, Father. Help them to draw nigh unto you, O oh God. Order their steps, O oh Lord, as only you can. Meet them in their place of asking. Hear them, Father, when they pray. Forgive them, Father, when they repent. We ask you, O oh God, if you'll continue to lead and guide them by your precious spirit. For, Father, we trust you, Lord, and we love you, Father, and we refuse to let go of your unchanging hand. Unto you who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, and according to the power that worketh in us, we say amen. Amen, amen. We cannot operate like we're just another business in the city. We got to operate like we're prayer warriors, seeking God, praying in good times and bad times, praying in, come on, in good days and bad days, praying when we see the light and praying in darkness. Praying like we got experience and we know what prayer will do. Some of us have prayed before and we've seen God work things out before. We've seen God bring us out before. We've seen God heal us before. I've seen God do it. Don't try to shut me down now. I got to pray for somebody that don't know what to do. Jesus. We got to do gotta do like we got experience we gotta do like we heard a war cry ought to be some church folk hearing a war cry it's time for the church of the lord jesus christ to hear a war cry it's time to pray now it's time to declare that we need the power of god to move in the land if nobody can heal my god can heal i've seen god do it Let me tell you something, don't you stop praying now. I don't care what the name of the virus is, there's one name you better know that's more powerful than any name of a virus. There's a name, there's a name, there's a name, there's a name that's above every name. I God, my God, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue pressure. I dare you to shout, Jesus. Thank <laughs> you.